Welcome back. I want to talk a little bit about the colonial period in South America. And if you recall, we talked a lot about the Spanish during the colonial period in Middle America. And in South America, it's going to be slightly different. We're going to have the Spanish, but also a significant presence of the Portuguese. And a lot of this has to do with the treaty from way back in the 1490s called the Treaty of Tordesillas. I'd like you to know what two countries that involved. It involved the two countries of Portugal and Spain. So the treaty, I'll take, we'll go back to that larger map in a moment. The Treaty of Tordesillas is an agreement between Portugal and Spain, and it divided up most of the world, including the Americas. And for us, we're interested in the Americas. So if you see this sort of red thing there, let's go back just a moment and get a larger view of that. This is the dividing line, that the idea is that the Portuguese and the Spanish, so in the 1400s, the Portuguese and the Spanish began to develop good sailing technology. And what they're really trying to do, and you might remember this from history, is they're trying to make their way to places like China and India. Right? There had been land routes previously. Those were difficult and sometimes blocked by other powers. So Spain and Portugal set out to you know, set up trade by sailing ship. Each had sort of a different approach. The Portuguese were making their way around Africa. And later on, when we get to the lectures on Africa, we'll talk more about the Portuguese in Africa. So their focus was really sort of around the Africa area and making the way around. The Spanish, on the other hand, had the idea to kind of go straight this way to get to East Asia. Found they had whole other continents in the way, as the story goes, and they established an empire here. Now, the Spanish and the Portuguese were, you know, to avoid disputes, set up a dividing line here from this treaty. And the idea is that if you were on this side, on the, on the right of the dividing line, um, that was the zone that the Portuguese had control of. And if you were on the left side, that was a zone that the Spanish controlled. And if you can see here, that line cuts through just through a bit of the Americas right here, and that's, the, that's Brazil. So if you know that they speak Portuguese in Brazil, that's why, because Brazil is a significant Portuguese colony. Okay. due to the Treaty of Tordesillas between Portugal and Spain. So this is a figure we saw before. You have you know, the, the Spanish in red, they were dominant power, a little bit more of a mixed situation in the Caribbean. And uh, we're gonna get, we'll talk more about these. These are the Guyanas. The Guyanas are a little bit more like the Caribbean than they are really more South America, so they're kind of mixed as well. And then this in green here, this is a Portuguese colony of Brazil. They started, you know, with just sort of this edge here and then kind of expanded into the interior over time. One thing that the Portuguese, because of their travels around Africa, the Portuguese were heavily involved in the transatlantic slave trade. This is a figure from a future chapter of Africa showing the amount of slaves that were brought to different locations. If you see the width of the arrow is the volume of people who were brought during the transatlantic slave trade and slavery. And if you look at the, compare the widths of say, who was, how many people were brought to British North America, which would be the United States, essentially, and compare that to the Caribbean, which is really wide, or the French Caribbean, or the Dutch Caribbean, and the widest arrow is here in Brazil. And Brazil was a, was a heavy destination for people brought in slavery and to work on plantations. And that still has an echo in some of the cultural geography of South America today. That, that in this area in green around the top part, you know, the top part of South America, this area in green are where you have the dominant ethnic group or African descendants. And this is largely due to the presence of sugarcane plantations around the tropical parts of South America. So these along the Caribbean coast and what we might call the Tierra Caliente in previous lectures, these are places that had sugar plantations and thus a lot of descendants and not only people who you know, worked on the plantation, but also people who escaped. We'll see a little bit more about that in a video that we'll show. People actually escaped from slavery and established settlements in some of the highlands nearby as well. Uh, one result of this is that Brazil has South America's largest black population of people of African descent. 
and they're really concentrated sort of in the northeastern part of Brazil as opposed to the southern part of Brazil. So this is kind of showing where the plantations are, like in the up in the in the Guyanas here, in Brazil's northeast and along this coastal plain. These tend to also follow where you have uh, people who are majority of African descent in South America. This is showing the different states of Brazil. And one thing to note is that if you look at uh, by wealth, a lot of these areas that were former plantation economies are still struggling economically. They're not the wealthiest parts of places like Brazil. The second group here in brown along on the Andes here and then in patches in the rainforest are indigenous peoples of South Americans. And the largest concentration is in this re region called the Andean West that we'll talk about. This is actually generally the area of the Inca Empire along the Andes Mountains. Uh, there are uh, indigenous groups that remain in the Amazon Basin, or what we call um, uncontacted people. Um, one thing, if you watch the video on the Potosi Mines, um, that you should have watched, um, the, that area is in this Andean West as well. So you might have kind of caught that there was a high, um, high representation of indigenous people in that area. This part in the middle, this sort of light greenish color is labeled mestizo. And mestizo is a Spanish term indicating people of mixed ancestry. And the Spanish had these really specific types of racial terms that they use. And so mestizo had a very specific term as far as being um, the child of a Spanish man and an indigenous woman. But generally now we, it's used to describe people who have some type of a mixed background. In the southern cone here, this is an area that was outside of the tropics. It has a climate more like the United States and Europe. And they also attracted large numbers of migrants from Europe. So we're in the US, when we had large waves of migrants coming into the US, to a lesser extent, you had large waves of migrants from Europe coming into the southern cone of South America as well. So in Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, and the southern part of Brazil, these are areas with higher amounts of European migration. And again, here's that figure showing the tropical part. You have sort of the ice cream part here. And then you have the mid-latitude part, which is the cone down here, which is the same type of climate zone, similar to the United States and to Europe. And that was part of the attraction, people coming to you know, establish farms that were similar to European farms. And so there's a higher level, uh, higher than usual level of European migration to the southern or non-tropical part of South America. One concept from this chapter is the idea of cultural pluralism. And what we see in cities like Sao Paulo, where you have a confluence of different groups, you have groups that live near each other, but don't necessarily mix with each other. Each one sort of lives in its own neighborhood or has its own little area that it lives in, in a mega city. And that's it, and next will be, we'll talk more about regions.